Hey, howdy, and good morning. We have some great stories, some great feedback this morning, so hang on. And man, I gotta start right away by saying, click like and subscribe, you saw that coming. Real story, generator zombie power. Here's the story, you tell me if you would have seen this coming. I finally installed a portable for my house with the uh, interlock, transfer switch, inlet, plug, yada yada. It was fantastic. End of day, worked a full day, got it all installed at my panel. I'll show you pictures. But here's what happened. I transferred the power, walk into my house, and all of my LED lights, all my LED cans I so proudly installed years ago, they're all strobing on and off as a group. My wife looks at me and goes, I don't know if she crossed her arms, but in my mind she did. She's, she's like, is that normal? Tough moment for the man ego. And I said no. So the next day, after I turned that off and restored the power, we have solar panels. So you guys have heard of THD, total harmonic distortion. This is a great example to explain this, better than I could have ever read or picked up. Here is the problem. Because I tested my generator just by turning off the main, the solar sensors are attached to the feeders going into the main. So, utility power technically is still on, right? So the solar panels are still pumping power in at their frequency. My old Westinghouse generator is pumping in power through the interlock or the back feed on a slightly different frequency. The voltage with my voltmeter, I checked it like, oh my gosh, I crossed the Mars. No, voltage on the meter was fine. Frequency was off. So the combination of probably super clean power coming off my solar panels and my Westinghouse beater generator not clean, the combination made all of my electronics, my LED lights, my router, that was a problem. My wife wasn't watching Netflix there for a second. It freaked out. Here's how I confirmed that was the deal. When I went back the next day, I turned off the, gen uh, the solar back feed as well as the main when I did the interlock, everything was perfect. So I don't think the solar was causing it, it was the combination of the frequency from clean power, low THD, with the generator power, high THD, and the combination of those two sine waves, if you wanna look at it that way, those two frequencies, made some gross zombie power. That was a problem, don't do it, let me know what you think. Um, next story, breaker shortage. CH, the tan handles, two pole sixties, we install uh, EV circuits for Tesla wall connectors, several a week, a bunch, can't find them. What about where you're at in your, your state, your country, can you get those tan handle two pole sixties, CH two pole sixties? We can't find them. Here's what, we're, here's what we're doing to do a workaround. We are installing a 70 or an 80 when we can find those going to a home line load center with the home line two pole 60 and doing the rest of the job as normal, trying to do a workaround. Second option, now tell me what you think of this, tap rule, article 240, okay, 10 foot rule. We are looking at doing uh, lugs, snap on lugs in the CH panel and doing the same thing. A couple of foot run goes right to a home line panel with the two pole 60 because we can get home line two pole 60s all day long. Let me know what you think. Breaker shortage, never imagined in all my years that we would have to do this much work to install a very, very simple circuit. And then finally, you guys and your questions about Romex and Conduit. Uh, we had one of the subscribers called me out, and thank you because you were absolutely right, about just stripping the Romex and running it through the outside pipe. Let me set the scenario here by code, NEC, whenever, whatever parts and materials you have have to be listed and approved for that application. So that comment, because initially, of course, I'm like, ah, how dare he correct me? Well, I thought I've been wrong before a lot. Uh, and I looked it up. So I went to Southwire, which is one of the Romex manufacturers, and looked at their specs on the individual conductors. We're talking about the black, white, and the bare copper. They're inside the sheath. So. I didn't know this the whole time I've been doing this, this line of work. The conductors inside the sheath are rated for 90 degrees, uh, 90 degrees Celsius, or you know, 90 degree column. So for temperature rating, that's really cool to know. However, no rating 
for damp or wet locations. So here's what we're back to to apply the code. If you're coming from an interior dry environment and you transition to outside, once you go outside, by code, you need to use a conductor that's rated with THW, MTW, some W. We usually say THHN, but the reason we do that is because if you looked at the roll and read the fine print, which I can't really do, but I trust it's there, you'll see you'll say THHN forward slash MTW or THW. The W means wet location. So there you go. Having said all that, now you know. That's the standard. Here's what happens. I have seen many, many people run that 8.2 Romex out of the attic through the back of a clamp connector on a bell box or other proof box, strip the sheath off, and just push the, the slack down a pipe to their load. It works. Is it safe? You know I cannot say that's safe out loud publicly. But I've seen it done hundreds of times. Does not make it right. So, if you're asking the question, is this right and is this safe, which to me has to be synonymous, you need to transition to outdoor rated wire or something that has a W on the sheath, make that splice and transition. There you go. I'm glad you're interested, but man, you guys are wearing me out. All right, that's fantastic. And that's what I got today. We got zombie power, we got breaker shortages, and we've got yet again another turn at Romex inside a pipe. Love your comments. Thanks for your questions. Once again, I'll see you guys later.